Hey, welcome back to the channel. We've got another vlog for you. Today we've got not only the production behind the scenes, but also some pre-production breakdowns. I'll be sharing some of our packing lists and pre-production documents, pre-interviews, so I'll be going over some of that, as well as the actual behind the scenes from the shoot. Enjoy. We'll start with the whole pulling the cart out, setting it up, and putting all the gear out, and lots of shots of our behinds, because we're really good at placing cameras, because, you know, we're cinematographers. And setting up the gimbal takes a long time, but the reason things like this are important is not only does something like that gimbal ring help you achieve better results, but it also looks impressive to the client. And you have to think about that dog and pony show, the show of filmmaking, because when you're charging a higher rate and you show up with just a camera, clients don't feel like they get what they paid for. And got lights loaded and loading up all the stands and things. Um, so there's a lot of gear uh, that packs onto this this cart to make these productions go smooth. Um, it's the things that we need. And so here's an example of our packing list. Uh, when we do a corporate shoot, we're always thinking about what gear do we need and what do we want to pack um, off of our kit. So we actually have a Google spreadsheet where we keep a list of all of our kit and we just go through and highlight the cells of the things we want to bring for this particular shoot. Uh, and then we go get all those things, load them up uh, and kind of check them off as we go. So this is how uh, we'll pack for a shoot is we'll look at this uh, packing list and grab the things that we need for the specific shoot. Uh, and that way we know we're always prepared and we have what we need based on the you know pre-production planning we've done. Um, and there's always things like make sure to grab an extra C-stand, grab an extra sandbag, grab th a little more than you think you need. Um, and as you'll see on some of our blogs, sometimes we forget to bring an extra thing and then we go, you know, I wish we would have brought the extra thing. Um, so <laughs> there's always a live and learn uh, with packing. And this was probably our third shoot with this cart, so we were still learning a lot about how to do things right with it. So for example, we have our, our light tubes and we wanna make sure we don't smash those and put things on top. So we gotta load in the tripod on top of, or tripod on bottom, I should say, and the light tubes on top. Um, so now here we are ready to roll uh, with a fun little uh, Tiny Planet version of our cart. And you can see, um, you know, we roll this thing in, you can see we've got the uh, flags and silks uh, hanging off the side um, with, off that double header. That's something we're definitely experimenting with. One thing we have learned is when you go through doors, that is definitely a little tight. Uh, so when we do go through doors, um, we have to take that off. And so um, you'll see us kind of work through this doorway here. And as we go through the door, uh, we're pretty much good until we get to that little grip head hanging off. And oops, there we go. So all we so we figured out uh, if we just pop that grip head off, um, and we just take that on through, uh, the light kind of sticks out too. Normally we just grab the entire double header, but we were kind of dumb and didn't grab it before this time. Um, and sometimes the camera can be rubbing up against the edge of the door, but it was okay for that particular scene. Uh, so then we just pop these things right back on. What's nice about the double header is if you grab the whole double header, it's just one big unit uh, that pops on and off and it makes it kind of easy. So um, after we uh, sign in, we roll down the hallway and you can see us come in another doorway. Uh, and there we are kind of tightening things up on the cart uh, to make sure that we're gonna do our best to fit through these doorways. Uh, and you can see that double header is always swinging around. So uh, here it is coming through another tight doorway. Uh, which for the most part is good, but as soon as we come to that double header, dink, oh yeah, that's right, take that off, dummy. Uh, so we are uh, <laughs> we're learning to get that thing uh, taken off before we go up to a doorway, uh, so we can just roll right through and not look like idiots. Um, <laughs> but hey, these are the learning pains um, of a new cart, uh, and you can see there we just kind of barely squeeze it on through, and we hit something in the side there, um, and. I think this was the shoot where we didn't realize we needed to turn the handles to the inside um, when we put the handles on. So now we also know that too. Uh, there's always something to learn uh, when you get a new piece of gear. So uh, the next thing that happens is uh, we're walking around the building, uh, scouting all the locations for the spots we're gonna be filming uh, so that we can then come back and start setting up and we'll know what to do uh, once we come back in. And speaking of knowing what to do, let's talk about pre-production for a second. Um, so what I've got here is schedules for the two half days of filming and our pre-interviews uh, that we did with our two main interview subjects. So uh, I've got a couple things redacted, but you can see uh, you know, that we're talking about you know, two half day shoots. And uh, because we had done those pre-interviews, we knew what we needed to capture in each interview. So we didn't need to plan a ton of time for the interview itself. Uh, we need some time for setup. Obviously, we want to make sure it looks good. But uh, we're able to work pretty quickly uh, and efficiently with the setup that we have. So you can see uh, a schedule here. 
uh, where we had the first one and uh, of course sometimes when you get there you find out oh we're gonna flip something on the schedule so you have to you know pivot uh, but that's just you know how it goes on a run and gun shoot like this uh, where they say actually we got to do this other thing first and this and that and whatever but you know hey it all works out uh, so um, but what you want to think about with the schedules you want to think about your load in think about your loadout think about setup time think about breakdown time think about how to make all those things work so um, that you have enough time to get what you need uh, for all the different pieces. And, and just to circle back to the pre-interviews for a second, if that's not a concept you're familiar with, uh, what we do is we schedule a Zoom call with the interview subject, um, no more than 30 minutes because we're not trying to take up a ton of their time. Uh, we're trying to make the interview day more efficient. So instead of spending an hour filming them uh, and kind of being like, well, tell me, what's your story? Oh, oh, well, let's say this this way. We do that over Zoom. Uh, so we do a quick pre-interview, we record the interview, we transcribe, we use AI tools, we transcribe it, we summarize it, uh, and then we also take our own human notes. Um, and then we organize those notes and we, we take their literal words from the transcript and we find the nuggets, we find the, the things, we basically ask them all the interview questions and we find the answers we want them to say on the day. And we basically script that. Uh, or at least bullet point it and then feed it back to them on the day and be like, hey, in our pre-interview, you said this. Can you say that again? And they go, great. And they just say the little nugget. Uh, so it makes, it streamlines the interview process, gives you better content because how many times do you get back from editing an interview and be like, oh, I wish they would have said this this way. So that's what we're doing. We're doing the interview twice. We're pre-interviewing them so we know the best things that they have to say. And then we're just saying, say that again. So by doing pre-interviews, you're taking more control over the storyline and the interviews, and you're ensuring you're gonna get better interviews by doing these pre-interviews. So uh, a great process that we recommend. Now Mike and I come in the room uh, where we're doing the first interview, and the first thing we gotta do is look around the room, decide where we're gonna put the interview, what things are in the way, what things have to move, and start setting things up. Uh, so we're kind of just moving our, our 360 camera around uh, behind the scenes wise so we can figure out and we're just grabbing the camera walk around look at different scenes uh, think about the contrast ratios we wanted the room lights off we wanted a little more contrast um, we're trying to catch that that wonderful uh, on the TV in the background as part of the scene I want that to be you know at least somewhat readable um, but we're also looking at the light and the contrast ratios um, obviously we're gonna bring in the lights and everything but um, we want to work with what we have in the room because we have these huge windows um, so we've got to work with those windows and so um, we decided this was the best scene uh, to place this and we kind of realized okay the desk is in the shot a little bit so we're going to move that over um, so these are all the things that you're thinking about and that you're doing um, as you're setting up for a shoot like this um, it's you know where you place the camera is the first decision to make because once the camera's placed now you can decide how to light and you can decide what you need and where the lights need to go and where the shadows need to go and when if you need negative fill and this and that and whatever. So um, we had a pretty good contrast ratio in this room just because of the room uh, and because there was not a lot um, sucking, uh, I'm sorry, there was not a lot, a lot of light bouncing. Uh, so we didn't have to uh, block that light with the negative fill. Um, so you can see we throw up um, the Nanlite uh, Pavo tube uh, for our hair light. We've got the boom, uh, we've got the soft box. Uh, for the key light and so we start setting that getting uh, getting all ready for that interview testing uh, with ourselves seeing do we need fill do we need neg all this good stuff um, and then we kind of make sure we get our frame set we get the boom set um, get lighting set so we want to get all this set before the client's there so that um, when they come and sit down we're not fiddling with everything for 10 minutes um, like there's always going to be a little bit of last looks always a little bit of adjustment um, you know as they came in we were playing just with that backlighted touch just to give a little uh, kiss of light in the back so it was just a little little dark and bland um, so uh, this is uh, what we ended up doing for the final interview setup and we were pretty happy with the results uh, and I'll show you what the final image looked like um, and that's kind of what it looked like from behind the scenes classes she had zero forklift experience so you can see a little snippet there from the interview and kind of the way everything looked uh, so We've got the key light. Um, we had a good contrast ratio, and so we did not need to add a negative fill because uh, that looks pretty good. Um, we were able to get um, that screen happening behind her in a way that felt all right. Uh, and uh, you can see that little touch of orange uh, coming in the background, just a little color contrast because the room was a little blue, so that little bit of orange was nice. And it kind of felt like it motivated that uh, kind of warm hair light. Uh, kind of felt like, oh, there's some kind of warm light over there. And so the hair light didn't seem so strange in a blue room because um, you do want to have that color contrast. So the warm hair light, you know, the blue background, the uh, warm light in the back gives a little color contrast and helps make that pop. And just like all good things, the interview comes to an end and we have to break it down. So um, 
we've just got to break everything down and put it away. Uh, so it's funny, things always uh, break down faster than they set up. Uh, that's just how it goes. Uh, it's like if you build something with Legos, it's way easier to tear it apart than it is to build it. What you don't see is that we also went into another room and got some B-roll um, of students in a class, uh, room situation, learning uh, about all this forklift stuff uh, for this video. Uh, so it was an education piece that we went and captured and we don't have the uh, behind the scenes for that. Um, that was just some quick quick b-roll of students sitting at a desk nothing too exciting we didn't light it or anything um, and then we have the excitement of watching this cart come back out the doorway um, trying to use lessons learned to get it through first try look at that we made it you can see Mike is like ready to jump if something uh, happens and then we realized boy um, it can be hard to turn uh, <laughs> in a hallway with this thing. So um, a good lesson with this, this is a 42 inch cart and it, it, like this is not a small hallway. This is like a normal hallway and it is just, just fits. Um, so you don't want the giant 50 inch cart unless you know your uh, locations. And here we are uh, end of the end of that portion of the shoot, uh, loading everything back up. We actually have a company move here um, where we load everything back into the car Boy, a cargo van looks pretty good right about now, watching us pack all this up. Um, and then after this little company move uh, of loading everything back into the car, we roll to another location, which is literally a one minute drive down the street um, to do some B-roll of forklifts in action. And I just want to point out the funniness uh, here. As I was scrubbing this footage, I realized how much my car uh, lifts up and down. as we load gear in and out. Um, so that was just a little piece of entertainment. Um, here we are on the next part of the shoot uh, where we're actually um, with students who are learning to drive forklifts for the first time. Uh, so we've all got safety vests on uh, so that they can see us and not run us over with a forklift because um, they've never driven one. So um, that's some entertainment. And here I am just with the gimbal ring uh, getting some B-roll shots. Uh, Mike has um, the FX6 on the long lens. I've got the FX3 uh, on the gimbal. For this shoot, it was very run and gun. We were just rolling the Tamron zooms. Um, I'm rolling the uh, 28 to 75, uh, 28, and then Mike's got the uh, 70 to 180, uh, 28 from Tamron. Um, those are kind of our go-to lenses for events and this kind of just run and gun coverage. Um, they're great, they're lightweight, um, and they make a great image, they're sharp. Uh, they kind of tick all the boxes, um, and they're not super expensive, which is nice, uh, but lightweight is even more important than that, uh, but without having to spend the money for a G Master, which is also lightweight, but not uh, cheap. So anyway, we like these lenses. Uh, they're workhorses for us, and we've put them through a lot, and they're still holding up well, so that's always good. And this is really just um, footage of us kind of working and trying to make shots uh, happen in the midst of all of this. Um, I'll, I'll drop uh, some of the actual footage and results so you can see what that looks like. So here's some of the final shots we got that are uh, in the final video. Uh, we've got some slow-mo on the long lens. Uh, here's some of the gimbal stuff, uh, wide lens, long lens. Uh, and we got a couple drone shots uh, as well. So you can kind of see some of the stuff that we were able to catch for them. So um, here's more. Um, there's always lots of tiny planet <laughs> on this uh, sort of stuff. Um, but you can see that when you're doing industrial stuff like this, um, one thing you have to be very aware of is safety uh, because that's a, a very important part. And so sometimes um, safety is even more important than the shots that you're getting. So you got to keep an eye on all of that. Um, you have to be um, you know, aware. Um, and obviously you got to be respectful uh, because they are, um, you know, like in this situation, they're doing an actual training. Um, so in this particular, you know, for this particular project, um, the forklift simulator company is the one who hired us. And then um, they had a client who had their forklift simulators, uh, which was uh, the wonderful company uh, Career Center uh, in a partnership with Bakersfield College for a um, education program for training people and using these forklifts. And so we were basically a guest um, of of the wonderful Career Center um, to come in and do this this filming, and they're running an actual class for students who are uh, who are here to learn this. And so um, there's a certain level we can't be overly disruptive, 
um, you know, to the like. Obviously, they they know we're there to film, and they're you know they're making sure that we're gonna get what we need. But um, it's not like we can constantly be like, hey, let's do that. Like we're not in control, right? It's not a commercial shoot um, where we're in control. And hey, the light's not right. Can you turn this way and whatever? It's it's more of a run and gun, catch what you can catch, um, and maybe you can be like, hey, can you do this maneuver? Because uh, it would look nice. But uh, the control we have is much more limited um, on a project like this and it's more about finding shots and finding what looks good and seeing what we can do um, to capture stuff uh, in a way that's not disruptive to them but still allows us to get the shots and things that we need so uh, that's the approach to take on something like this and so for example like boy that sun is blazing hot and all we can do is really make the best of it and you know, and normally if this was a commercial situation, it'd be like, great, uh, where's the shadows? And let's turn and face the shadows. Let's put the sun behind us. Let's control the slide a little better. Um, but you can see the sun is pretty much straight up. I mean, that shadow is, is basically straight down. Um, so there's not really anything uh, sun-wise we can do. Like, it is a hair to one side. And so, yeah, ideally we want to film that way. But guess what's that way? The parking lot. So, you know, we can only, um, you know, control what we can control. Um, so in a situation like this, it's not about getting the most beautiful images. It's about catching what's happening and doing the best you can to make it look decent and, um, you know, staying out of the way and being safe. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's, there's different considerations for different projects. And so some projects are about making pretty images and, you know, we take more control on those. Um, but, you know, you can see here I am like pretty close to this forklift um, and I'm getting a shot at the other forklift. But I have to keep my eyes out on him to make sure that you know he doesn't run into me and this and that, whatever, um, as we're getting these shots. Um, like I'm getting close, getting his forks going in. Uh, and so I've got to make my shots happen, but I've also you know got to keep safety in mind. Thankfully, you know, they only had two uh, forklifts running in an area, so it wasn't like there was 10 forklifts I had to watch out for. Uh, but I mean, you can see like these are students learning how to drive forklifts, and it's easy for them to make mistakes. And so because uh, this is literally the first time they've driven a forklift. And so we have to be careful um, of those safety considerations while trying to get the best images we can. Um, and that's where you go back to, we're using Tamron zoom lenses because um, these zooms give us the flexibility we need to make really good shots in a very run and gun environment. Uh, so that's why we're not playing with primes. We're not you know, <laughs> uh, shooting anamorphic primes and all these things to like make super cinematic images because we don't have that level of control. And so we can't guarantee that we're going to make those those images work with those conditions so um, you can see mike and i here both um, trying to get shots and you know we this was again a very run and gun where mike and i both just like grab cameras look for shots and you know we're shooting the same thing we're shooting different things we're just trying to catch as much as we can in a short amount of time because uh, we also had a limited time we were able to be here um, and so we had to get as much footage as we can uh, in that a short amount of time. So anyway, hope that is a helpful walkthrough um, of a shoot like this and the process we go through to get good images uh, all kinds of ways.